it's that time of year where ah, we just take a dip, big deep breath and we breathe in the Christmas songs. We yes. breathe in the snow all the way down here in Tampa, Florida. Maybe you're up <laughs> in the Northeast, so do you have you yeah, gotten, have, have you? No, no, it is devastating. It was 60 degrees. What? Yesterday. Really? Yeah. Pennsylvania just does not get snow. Like it's always, you always expect it to be like a snowy Pennsylvanian countryside. No, it's like mud and sheep on the hill. It's really <laughs> sheep on the hill. Are you living in Ireland all of a sudden? Hey, welcome. You know, sometimes it looks like it with, you know, there's some pastures with some sheep, which is nice, but it would be nicer if they were snow covered. Sure. A lot of dudes out yeah. there drinking Guinness. I, I lived in New Jersey. Like I know, I know the flavor of that. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Alter Live show. Uh, I'm Andy. And I'm Maeve. And we're so happy to have you here. Stephanie is joining in saying that she loves 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 lux church digital yes absolutely yes and amen we're gonna get to a very special guest mark is also online with us oh this is very meta that's happening right now uh yeah and crm has says four to eight inches in new hampshire tomorrow uh, Maeve, looks so like jealous. looks like we know where you gotta move to i know i know i cool. know uh, i'm jealous uh i am too uh being down here in tampa i get sand actually we're uh my dad lives on the water uh and so i'm going over to my dad's house tonight and oh. it's supposed to like my apple watch says it's 82 uh oh i God. think we're gonna try to take the boat out because that's what you do that's nice though that's really nice is it taking the boat out well do you not like boating no i mean i grew up sailing but like yeah but the, here's the deal it's december and okay. i'm originally from michigan and okay, yeah. so and I lived in New Jersey and Georgia and all this other stuff. So it deep within the very fiber of my being that God mm -hmm. created me with, mm -hmm. I need leaves falling off trees yeah. and I need snow and I need the crispness. Yeah, I need things like yeah. I think I need things dying and coming back to life in a very <laughs> biblical way. Yes, all around okay, me. I hear you. Cool. Uh, hey, we typically talk and we ask questions of you and we ask for your responses and stuff, but. We have a very special guest sitting in our waiting room that we're gonna in our green room that we're gonna get to in just one quick second. If you have not checked out our online engagement Christmas guide, head to the comments or the or the description below uh, and grab that. It's gonna help you in this very last week because Maeve, I don't know if you knew this, Christmas Eve is like mm -hmm. a week away. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable is right. We I the church that I work at we have five services christmas eve uh all of them i'm taking care of online i'll be in the studio and actually for our 11 p.m i'm going to be playing bass so nice yeah but it's like a <laughs> like i feel like i need cool. to hibernate a little bit before i get to oh, it yeah okay so uh last week you said that you got pretty much all of your christmas shopping done how mm -hmm. are we doing are we we're good, like we're good. okay yeah i have i have to get those like gifts for the family like the the relatives yeah. like I have all my immediate family done but usually how I do it is I get like a gift for the family mm. instead of like individual so I'll probably go to home goods get like a nice like treat or mm. like a hot cocoa kit type thing and be like here you go and they'll love it the mm. best was when there were like royal weddings happening so I got so we got like what? a Harry and Meghan like tea set <laughs> <laughs> cool okay great yeah i love it i'm 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 here for it uh yeah there's a whole lot that going on there that i don't necessarily want to touch with a 10-foot pole so with no, that no, with that auspicious introduction we want to bring in our very special guest mark from lux church digital mark how are you on this fine fine december whatever afternoon that we are I'm I'm great, Andy, and uh, but I have a conversation to have with Maeve before we get anywhere. Maeve, I'm in I'm in I'm in PA as well. I'm oh, north of Pittsburgh. Okay. Am I near you? I'm in the Philadelphia area, so no. The answer is no. I'm not both. near you. No. no. Yeah. Okay. What? So <laughs> so I've been to Pittsburgh once, and I used to spend a ton of time in Philly. So like, what? I always hear of the strife between Philadelphians and Pitts Pittsburghers, Pittsburghians. What? I don't know what you guys call it. from the Berg. <laughs> Uh, sure, so yeah, sure. What is the what's the beef? 
Well, if you're into sports, there's beef. If you're not like me, then I I don't have any beef. The only time I was in Philly was for a mission trip. My car got broken into and someone stole all my stuff out of it. So like, I but to be fair, I was in Fishtown before it was gentrified and like turned into some hipster area now. Um, But I was in Fishtown as like a teenager when it was still rough. The other thing, Maeve, is is that I just want you to know that the royal family is appreciated in our household, not by me, um, but by my (laughs) wife. So. Um, one of my daughter's first birthday parties was the day after a recent royal wedding, and okay. it was it was British themed. So, like, oh my gosh, uh, uh, like it, there was, uh, <laughs> yeah, English, like British flags, and like I, I'll just say this: my wife has watched the royal wedding probably fifteen oh times. Oh my god! Wow. Um, okay, I'm not so that devoted. Does she, she like the she crown loves though? It. She likes the uh, crown. She loves, she loves the crown. She loves yeah. Victoria on Amazon Prime. That's a good um, one too. Yeah. Yeah. So she she's really into that. My my wife's family is British and she's just very okay. intrigued by, oh, by the okay. whole thing. So so, the, so there's yeah. an actual there's an actual reason. So you're not I you're not one of the I have a British It's not aunt, a good reason. So. I no, I understand. Hey, as long as there is like some sort of immediate lineage, but my favorite is like the good old Georgia, like my, my, I love my father-in-law uh, and my mother-in-law, but like the people around them that are from deep South Georgia uh, that are involving themselves in Harry and Meghan and all oh, the pageantry. And, <laughs> what are you talking about? What is- I know. We, yeah, they're like, we're, we're related. We fought against them at one point in our ancestry. That yeah. pretty much means that we need to be concerned, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Keep your enemies close, right? All right, Mark, yeah. uh, well, welcome into the Alter Live show. Uh, I d- contrary to popular belief, I did not bring, or we did not bring you on to talk royal politics. Uh, that's later. That's for another podcast. Um, yeah, my wife I'm will be on that one. Time. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, we, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, over a month ago, actually, I logged into a fantastic site called Twitch, twitch.tv, to tune in and be a part of a couple of worship services from a church called Lux Church Digital, which is just so happens to be the church that you and your wife started, and you are lead pastor, head pastor. Is there a title, or are you just is it kind of? I'm just the like the when head you're guy. the only guy, there's not really reason to add anything to the pastor title, Solid. right? So, Solid. Yeah. okay, yeah. first off. Tell me, tell me about you. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your journey through ministry and how you got to Lux Church Digital. Yeah, sure. Well, um, so we planted Lux uh, in March of 2021. Um, I uh, I grew up in Western PA. I've lived here my whole life. Um, I wor- worked for a physical church for 11 years as a youth pastor, discipleship pastor. A handful of roles wore a handful of different hats while I served there. Uh, for a little over a decade um, called New Life Christian Ministries. And it's in a small town. It's like a little rural Western Pennsylvania town. It's a little historic town. Um, It's on the map because John Roebling grew up here and uh, he's the guy who invented wire rope and designed the Brooklyn Bridge. And so- uh, cool. and so like, but, but it's the middle of nowhere. We have like 1500 people uh, that live in town in a stop sign. And so that's about it. And so, uh, I, I served that church for a long time, saw it grow. Lots of great stuff happened. Um, but through actually my love of gaming and passion for gaming over time, uh, we really felt a pull and a draw towards that specific demographic of people. Um, very specifically, we saw a lot of gamers who were, uh, just really far from the Lord and we're searching the, the gaming community is uh, largely a lot of people who are very intellectual um, and and very, very, very thoughtful. It, it's not full of a lot of people who are just sort of like brainlessly staring at screens. And so um, I had been really emerged in that culture and just uh, like submerged in that culture, really spent a lot of time in it um, over my time in ministry. And uh, so eventually uh, all of that comes together. We started a podcast we were uh, that was about video games where I was just talking about a specific video game um, that sort of led to us praying for people and, and beginning to do ministry with people all over the globe. That sort of led to the idea of potentially planting a digital church, which I thought was heretical, um, and so we weren't going to do it. Um, and God really dealt with me with that in 2019. So the beginning of 2020, we went to our senior pastor and said, we're going to plan an online church in about three or four years, finish seminary, get into that. And, uh, and then we ended up like the next day or like a a week later, um, the pandemic hit. And so our church just went into tailspin. We tried to figure out what to do. We did what every other church did. Um, I went from having small groups and spending time with people and doing pastoral care and hospital visits to streaming from my basement three times a week and praying for people from our church and connecting with our church family. 
Um, and it was sort of like one of those things where it got put on the back burner, but by August of 2020, it was like, we got to strike while the iron's hot. This mm -hmm. is the time that people are sort of getting their minds wrapped around digital church, something that my mind had been wrapped around, but we weren't, we weren't coming to terms with that. Like we knew that was the direction. We just thought it was in the future. Well, we ended mm -hmm. up deciding in August to make it not the future, but the present. Mm -hmm. We went to Stadia Church Planting and worked with them, sort of got the thumbs up and approval from them to plant a digital church. They had never done like something like that before, but there was two other couples who were with my wife and I who were doing very different churches than what we were doing, but digital churches as well. And uh, we ended up being Stadia's first church plant to wow. actually go live and officially start. And that was in March of 2020 one um when we like officially launched we were building teams and stuff as i was transitioning from my previous church um but now i've had the privilege and the honor of being the church of an or the pastor of an entirely digital church um our church family like you know this past week was uh one of our church family members first time with us um and they were uh they were in from poland so you know from australia all across the eu we don't get a lot of people from like china or asian countries um their internet works a little different than us <laughs> Um, and, uh, and their time zones a little off, um, but EU all across the United States, Canada, some South American, um, folks. And so get the chance to shepherd a flock of people who we all, we always say here at Lux, like I won't get to hug till heaven. Hmm. Um, but a lot, a lot of folks that one day I'll be able to greet, but right now I don't get the chance to do that. So, hmm. uh, I know Maeve has a burning question about the gaming community. Maeve, would you be so kind as to ask Mark your burning question? Yes. So when you were a kid, were you a Super Nintendo kid or a Genesis kid? Uh, oh, uh, when I was a kid, my parents made me split logs in the backyard and didn't let me play video games. <laughs> Solid. Um, so yeah, so no, I mean, I grew, I grew up like on, you know, my family owns about 200 acres of land. My uncles do on farms. Um, I grew up like really rural. Um, like my first, my first bedroom that wasn't mine and my brother's was, was decorated with deer heads and, and guns and stuff. So, um, you know, like hunting and things. So I did play some games, uh, at like buddies houses and stuff, but, mm. um, we didn't actually own a system really until the N64. Okay. Um, and then I always was like a system back typically until I got old enough to, to buy my first gaming PC. And um, I'm actually more of a tabletop gamer than a video gamer. So I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons since okay. sixth grade, um, tabletop RPGs, tabletop card games. I have a, of a board game collection of a hundred some different board games um, wow. in my basement. That's so, cool. um, so that's kind of like the, the, I'm actually more of a tabletop gamer than a video gamer, but I do play video games now. Did you grow up in a Christian household? Yeah, so I grew up in a Christian household. We grew up going to church. Um, we attended a little reformed church. I ended up in a PC USA church for a mm. while. Um, ended up going to a reformed Presbyterian college, um, which was very different than what I had experienced <laughs> um, growing up. Um, and during that time, I worked for Christian Missionary Alliance Church, non-denominational church. And then I spent the last 10 years of my life uh, at a non-denominational church. Um, mm. So that has kind of been my experience. Okay. Um, so a bit of a denominational mutt. Yeah. Uh, the the reason I was asking that, because the D&D &D thing, especially when you're in sixth grade, I started playing right around then as well. And I was in a Methodist church and it was not a pretty sight when I told my parents didn't care. But there were other mm -hmm. people in the church who were like, oh, you, you know, you're summoning Satan when you're doing that stuff, right? It's like, mm, no, I'm, well, I'm, sure. I'm just a, I'm an, I'm an elven ranger who's shooting arrows at things. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Like my mother always said she'd rather me play D and D at, on Friday nights than do cocaine. So, um, <laughs> you know, she figured if I was huddled in my buddy's basement, pretending to be an orc, then I wasn't doing drugs, um, Solid. which may have not been a safe bet for everybody, but it was a safe bet for me and my friends. So, Solid. and actually all of my D and D friends were my church friends. I did youth group in dungeons and dragons. And that was kind of my entire upbringing, you know, youth group in church three times a week, D and D once or twice a week. And that was kind of how I did life, you know? Gotcha. Okay, uh, let's talk about Lux. Um, so Lux Digital Church officially launched, when did you say March of 2021? Yeah, we, we officially marched, I think it's March 23rd or 24th of 2021. Okay, and so mm -hmm. along that process, you and I, and I guess I, I, I think it's funny, I was talking about Jeff Reed uh, and you had a little smile on your face. I understand why you had a smile on your face now, being with Stadia. Um, what, what did that partnership look like between you guys and Stadia? Yeah, well, we went through their CPAC program, which mm -hmm. is kind of like their uh, church vetting program. 
Um, and then we had the same stuff that you would have if you were a church planner through Stadia. So church planners through Stadia go through project management training, financial training, and then uh, cohort. We did all of that stuff sort of out of order because Jeff was our, he like led our cohort and he was new to Stadia at the time. Um, and so we did all of that stuff out of order, but we did all, all of the same stuff. And so they kind of walked with us every step of the way in the process of getting ready to go in the process of planting, you know, filing for our 501c3, which the federal government waited nine months to give my stuff back. Been, and I just found there. out that they didn't actually look at any of it. They been just there. sent it back and asked for all the same information I gave them yep. back in May. So that's yep. really nice. That yep. was today. Yep. Um, so yeah, so, and we still have a really good partnership with Stadia. Uh, I actually volunteer some time for Stadia. I help them work through um, their incoming digital planters. Oh. Um, and so I've done some of their cohorts and done their CPAC for digital folks um, with Jeff before. And then we're going to be looking in the new year. Uh, Lux is going to enter into a little bit more of a partnership with Stadia, helping them sort of vet the people who come through their discovery process who want to start entirely online churches. Cool. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, uh, tell me a little bit about Lux and how you guys are broadcasting kind of the medium, everything that you're doing service wise. You know, I know you got, it looks like you got vibrant small groups happening. How, how does all that work? How does it all play in each week? Sure. I mean, a lot of people like your first question when you're, when you're talking to someone who's doing a digital church is you're like, how, <laughs> right? Like how does it, it can't work. It can't be a thing. And, and I think a lot of times the truth is, is that this is locked behind the concept of relationship, not actually the concept of practicality, right? right? Because the vast majority of people, mm -hmm. your only experience with strangers online is the people who comment on stuff on Facebook or repost stuff that you disagree with. And, and because Facebook wants to send you things that are inflammatory because you have a much higher chance of comment on their platform what? if something no. inflammatory right Get and so that's their experience most people do not well not most um most people who are millennials and older do not keep vibrant online relationships um once you begin developing online relationships and you realize that they're not just possible but they're deeply transformative you begin to realize that the church looks different online but you're capable of doing everything that your church already does but instead of doing it with a physical address and some you know brick and mortar um you know timber and steel you're doing it in digital spaces and you're constructing buildings but you're constructing those things in digital space so our we say that our sanctuary is on twitch and the only reason that that is where it is is because I am a gamer and we are targeting the gaming community specifically. Hmm. To give you just a, a rough shot idea, there's about 3.5 million broadcasters who go live on Twitch. There's about 100 million unique viewers that view it every single month. Um, the average Twitch viewer watches 75 minutes a day. Um, and the average hardcore gamer is like a 32-year-old male. Um, and it's about 70, 30 men. So most of our churches, the men have emptied out of the churches. We have churches that do not actually represent the demographics of the culture because we have mostly churches that are more majority filled with women than men. Well, where are they? A lot of them are here in the gaming culture. And so, uh, like it's a, it's a, we're very specific about that demographic, but when people talk about where's your church, like our service, our sanctuary is on Twitch, but the rest of our church, your bulletin boards, your welcome center, your prayer rooms, your Sunday school classrooms, your small group places, your hangouts, your fellowship halls, everything else exists on an app called Discord or a piece of software called Discord, which I'll be honest, I don't really know the origins of Discord. I know more about Twitch, um, but, uh, but, but Discord like itself, it's sort of like a community. It's an online community development tool in a lot of ways. And so um, it's very, very customizable. If you're familiar with Slack, that's not completely unlike Slack, except it has slightly more robust features, voice chats, video chats, um, text chat rooms, uh, everything. And you can customize it and build it however you want. So we basically built a church mm -hmm. on Discord and that's prim primarily where we sort of function operate and disciple people and so from there um we have uh we have online small groups and so like i have a i have a monday night small group i've been meeting with for nine months been discipling a group of guys there um we have uh in discord we post devotionals that are written by different members of our church family i don't write any of them now we post five a week that go out in discord we have Bible studies that are led by me or one of other three other guys um, who lead Bible studies in version. We do a five to seven day Bible study every single Monday. We're in the mm -hmm. word and we're starting a new Bible study every Monday. 
um, over on over in you version, but we link all that stuff through Discord. Movie nights, game nights, hangouts, like all of that stuff happens over in Discord. Literally right after this call, I have a pastoral council call hmm. that's going to be happening in Discord. Hmm. Um, and so like uh, all of like the communication and functionality of like where our digital home is, primarily Discord. But if you picture where your sanctuary is for your physical church, our sanctuary is inside of Twitch. Just you exit Twitch and you enter Discord and you're entering the rest of our physical building. Hmm. That's great. Um, I think there's a deeper conversation to have about discipleship there. And I want to, if we have time, I want to get to that. But um, I think I guess the, the 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 next question, the reason that we're on the Altar Live show, and we could talk for days and days and days about the the actual ecclesiology and all that, all the the words that happen behind church. What drew you to Alter Live? Like, how did you hear about us? Where did it come from? How, it was, what are you using the platform for? Sure. I, I mean, we we knew Alter Live early on, um, only because I was in with Stadia stuff and and Jeff Reed, and so that stuff. And he's kind of like the godfather of that right now. <laughs> and he was connected to Alter Live and Stephanie, and so, um, you know, we found out about that during training because it was something that we explored using with our churches from the beginning. And I don't know if any one of us are using its full features. Um, but after several months of church, what we recognized is we were getting people into our church family who were not as native to Discord as I expected them to be. And Discord is a phenomenal program if you've been willing to put in the time to learn it. If, you have, if you're unwilling to put in the time to learn it, it can feel clunky and very confusing. It's easy to get lost in it, and it's kind of foreign to you. Gaming culture, not foreign to us at all, because... It is literally where we connect every day. I use Discord more than anything else in my life. Hmm. Um, and that was that was true. I communicated more over Discord than probably text messaging and phone calls prior to planting Lux. So hmm. it's a place where I already spent a lot of my time and a lot of my life. Um, but we really, what we were looking for specifically was a bridge program. Um, we needed a place that was easy for people to get into where they could plug in, grab a seat, meet me, meet our welcome team, jump into a conversation that wasn't a screaming room. And so like discord calls are often considered sort of screaming rooms because you get like 12 people in the same call and, yep. and it's just two people talking. Right. Yep. Um, and we needed to be able to break that down, which is something that we could have done in discord, but we felt like Ultra might've had a user interface that was a little bit better for us. Hmm. Um, now that is unique. We're unique in that way because we were looking for Alter to sort of help us bridge a gap between our live stream on Wednesday nights for service and where we existed every day in between live streams and video drops in Discord. Hmm. If I was to plant a digital church today that wasn't in the gaming community, um, I would not be doing what I'm doing because it doesn't make any sense to plant a non-gaming church on Twitch because that's where gamers are, right? Um, and so if I was like a campus pastor or an online pastor, right? Um, and we can get into all sorts of stuff about Twitch culture, gaming culture, and like the choices that we've made to specifically target that group. But for us, like if I was planting somewhere else, like Alter would be the the thing that I would use, hmm. bar none, hands down, 100%. I would rather get them to use this than church.online. I would rather get them to use Alter than teach them how to use Facebook Live or Facebook Groups. Um, Alter would be the place where I would put my online campus because it's just the, which is the reason why I wanted to use it because I knew like, depending on what direction our church went in the future and church planting um, and, and other digital campuses, I was like, this, this actually has the ability to be sort of the central piece in the web where our content can actually exist where, yeah, we have church families on multiple platforms, but we have a general central meeting place that's all webbed to the same place. That all comes back to Alter. Um, and we don't know what the future is going to look like, but, you know, my heart, like, I hope that we'll be able to use more of the full features of the platform in the future. Hmm. So what features did you find yourself using the most? Because we know people who just use rooms for small groups or just use the event space for certain things. What did you got? Did you use the whole platform or was there something that you use specifically that really helped your community? So we did not use the worship space okay. at all. Um, we used the tables and um, we're trying to make, I'm trying to get my team to use the rooms. 
right? Yeah. It, for many of them, it's just easier. Like they've been meeting on Discord for nine months prior to church. So our pre-service huddles have been there already. So for mm -hmm. so many of them, like it's just natural to continue to do that. But what we've been mostly using is sort of like the interface that shows all the four seat, you know, four person tables. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's been easy for people to come, click log in and then choose, see who's sitting where and choose which table they would like to sit at. Um, and that, you know, first week we had, you know, folks who were from vastly different places that they're living cultures and and faiths you know they were there until the room the rooms closed out at midnight i didn't even know they were still in there um, wow. and so like that kind of became the place where people were connecting it, for us it's like after service if you go to a physical church you leave and you like there are people who just bolt right there's always people mm -hmm. who just like peace like i'm done with church check the box, I'm getting in my car and I'm leaving, or I have a place to go. But there's also people who don't leave. And at the end of your last service, you're like, hey guys, I love you, I appreciate you. Like go find a pizza joint to hang out in because yep. I wanna go home, yep. I'm tired. <laughs> and so like Alter kind of became our space to allow that to happen, hmm. right? Um, because we just, that didn't exist for us. Like once you take the stream down and you're done being live, where do they go? Well, we were going to Discord and it wasn't working as well as we'd hoped. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're experimenting now with Alter and getting that more a part of what we're doing i think our next tagline awesome. is going to be ultra live you don't gotta go home but you can't stay here uh <laughs> yeah but ultra does that for you You don't even have to have that awkward conversation you just set for when you want the service to end and they all get booted and then you go it sorry guys it was morning. yeah it was the thing it was the platform i can't do anything about it uh yeah uh, my bad yeah totally no, uh that's that's super cool to hear uh we're i'm gonna chop out some of those comments if you're okay with that because i think there's a there's an interesting discussion being had right now uh, and we were kind of talking about this pre-show, uh, and then I ran out of time because I'm a wordy idiot when it comes to talking about stuff. But um, there's an interesting conversation ha being had now that it appears that pandemic things are settling down or whatever it's going to happen is going to happen nowadays. And churches are now half full, uh, and that's like basically 50% of people have gone back to church. Sure. Uh, and a number of those that aren't in that are in the 50% that haven't come back remain online but there are a number of people that are getting weeded out and have just you know it was basically wheat from chaff type stuff and the interesting thing that happens is people especially my age so again I'm a millennial square in the millennial category millennials say well you can't have relationships online like you said even though I've had relationships with people playing Halo and fantasy Final Fantasy and all sorts of stuff throughout my years I still talk to them still pray for them still pray with them the conversation being had now is how do we take that next step of relationship online so that when people are not in a church or not in a physical space, they can actually do the thing that they're called to do, and that is love on each other, love people, and love God, basically. And I think you're doing an excellent job with that. I, I would almost I would almost want to press one quick thing and just say, you said that you're targeting gamers, mm -hmm. and I, and I, I, I know that that doesn't it doesn't mean what I think it means, but like, what do you, what do you mean by that? What choices are you making that are specifically aimed at gamers? Yeah, sure. I mean, every choice that we made is specifically aimed at gamers. So, Solid. um, okay. So, you know, one of the things that you do with Stadia is you identify your one. We already had a pretty good idea about that. That was if you're from church world. You understand this is Saddleback Sam, yep. right? So like, who's your one? So our one is a 27 year old gamer who's working a dead end job, unmarried guy spends most of his day coming home from work, um, sits down on his PC, jumps in Discord with his buddies, plays games until around midnight, goes to sleep, rinse and repeat. On the weekends, he's spending time doing something similar. Probably the most passionate thing that he's engaged with right now is the LGBTQ rights community. Mm. And that is not because he's particularly passionate about it, just because everyone around him is. And mm. so like, that's our guy, right? That that's it. And that's internally, like in the background, that's our dude. Um, however, like what are some of the specific things that we've done to, to reach that person? Well, the microphone that I'm talking on right now is a Shure SM7B. The yes, Shure SM7B is. is the hallmark of a streamer who's made it. So we speak and preach on Shure SM7Bs. The backdrop of our shot is um, video games, uh, board games, uh, and pieces of nerd culture because we want people to be able to connect to and relate mm -hmm. to that. The cameras that we're using, we're using predominantly uh, wide throw prime lenses, 12 millimeters. Why? Because you wanna be close to your shot. I'm never far away. The worship that we do is typically um, uh, sort of uh, reflective by nature because we know that most people who are watching church happen 
uh, and aren't in the building are not going to sing because they can hear their own voice in their own living room and don't feel comfortable doing so. And so worship for us is this time of reflection and preparation for hearing from the word of God. Um, the camera angles that we use, how close our cameras are. I preach, you know, a foot and a half, sometimes two feet, maybe away, maybe three foot at most uh, away from our camera. Why? Because Twitch streamers sit close to their cameras. Um, mm. So like the clothes that I choose to wear, um, I wear a lot of Star Wars shirts when I preach, right? Um, and so like all of that stuff has a lot to do with the culture that we're ministering to. Like this week at post-service, like so after church, we do post-service, it's time of Q&A. Instead of doing our normal post-service, we did Mountain Dew tasting where we had five guys on a couch and we taste tested and rated on a tier list seven different types of Mountain Dew. And I hate pop. But like, it was just like, that's what we did mm. because there's like, there, there's still some truth about the fact that Mountain Dew and Doritos are part of gaming culture. 100%. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, like, and, and I, I don't, when I preach, we, there is another church out there that's entirely online. They've been around for five years. They're in gaming culture. It's called God squad church. It's, mm -hmm. it's led by pastor, um, Matt Souza and Matt was on our board here at Lux. He's not currently cause his streaming schedule changed. Um, and I would say that like pastor Matt and God squad have done a great job sort of like creating a church that's very submerged in gaming culture, right? Every one of their sermons pulls from gaming analogies. You're not going to be able to really understand the fullness of what they're preaching. If you're not a gamer, mm -hmm. what we're doing, that's very different from that is that we say we're a church where gamers are right. I, and I'm not saying that this isn't understood by God squad because I love what they're doing and I love Matt's heart and we're good friends. Um, but for us, I wanted to say, listen, gamers are multifaceted. They're not just gamers. Mm. And so they have spiritual lives and identities that go far beyond the video games that they play. How, how like, that means that they deserve a church that is like a church, yeah. right? And so um, and so we say that we're a church where gamers are rather than a church for gamers. But it's, mm. it's going to be pretty clear. Like, there's going to be things that are going to make the average gamer feel more comfortable tuning into our stream. They're not going to come in and say, this wasn't for me. Like, if you come into our live stream on Wednesday night as a gamer, and you don't know anything about Jesus. Like, you'll come in and be like, oh, yeah, this was for me. Like, I understand this. I understand the equipment. I understand the the look. I understand the vibe. I understand the conversation, right? And which has enabled us to have a tremendous amount of engagement with our chat, you know, on any given night, we will have hundreds of comments. It, it, it is not uncommon for us to see almost as many chatterers as we have people who are consistent throughout the stream. That's great. Because almost every one of our people say at least say hello and we get to greet them and say welcome, which is a largely the big problem with people who are watching church. You're watching on their TV. Yep. And oftentimes you go through the whole service and two out of your 50 people ever say anything, yep. you know? Yep, hundred percent. And as a as a digital pastor, again, in a in a traditional quote unquote physical church, um, the toughest thing right now is getting people to do more than just say hey, but mm -hmm. to actually engage with what's going on. And we've had to take you know we don't unfortunately we I'm I don't I don't I don't have gamers around me, and so it's like this: how do I get how do I live with people? How do I do the pastor thing of sitting on couches and having dinners and having coffees, because that's what pastors do. How do you do that? And I and CR just jumped in and said, you know, you're, you're working in a great mission field. And I completely agree. Like, I'm, I'm a little jealous of your mission field, because like, as a gamer myself, but also like, just seeing what you guys are doing and following you and stalking you and kind of doing that thing. Like, I, I am, I'm 100% on board. How, I guess my last question for you guys is wh what are you doing in terms of volunteering? What are you doing in terms of like discipleship and kind of the old school church things? I know you're eschewing a lot of that, but like even the sacraments, how does that, all of that work with you guys? Sure. So, um, and this is a, you this know, is a that's a big question. So don't get as new, sure. don't feel you need to get nuanced if you don't need to. Um, I mean, if you're not going to disciple people, then you're not a church. 100%. So uh, uh, our goal wasn't to start an online service. Our goal was to make disciples. So mm -hmm. before we started services, we put the tools in the place that help us make disciples. It's my firm belief that disciples are made through basic rhythms. Hmm. And so for us, those rhythms are prayer, Bible reading, fasting, and community. And we believe that if you will consistently participate and orient your life around those rhythms, that common rule, 
that it will radically change your life. Mm. And so we don't do a whole lot more other than that. Like you don't see a lot of programs coming from us simply because the more complex an, uh, an organization gets, the harder it is for that organization to multiply. Hmm. And so we're unapologetically simplistic in that. And we will always be as simplistic as we possibly can be and as stripped down as we can be when it comes to discipleship. Here are our rhythms. Read your Bible, actively pray, be fasting, be in community. Yep. These are our rhythms. Yep. This is what we do. Yep. And so, you know, that's been part of our culture from the beginning um, and will continue to be. As far as volunteers go, I would say we have about 25 or 30 people who are on our dream team right now. Those people do everything from running chat commands, welcoming people when they become part of our community and reaching out to them, supporting people and praying for people. We have a prayer team, support team checks in with people from the community. Um, we have dream team and stuff, which helps us run commands and run chat and welcome people during services. Um, welcome team, like I said, welcomes people into the community. Bible study team, people who lead Bible studies, devotional writers, they write devotionals for us. That's kind of a form of teaching and a, a way to be transparent. Um, small group leaders, and these people are, are leading weekly small groups for us where that community is happening. And that's really where you're trying to naturally gravitate people towards is like face-to-face -face video chat mm. type of stuff. Mm. Um, that's where people stop being a screen name and a profile picture and they start being people with names and families yes. and stories. And, um, if you've never experienced that, like that's the big culture jump for us. Like the thing that we have as the church that we have to offer the online world that they do not have isn't better streaming equipment. It's not better or more engaging stuff. What we have to offer is breaking down the mentality that if I don't know your name or your story, that you're not real. Therefore, I can say whatever I want. Oh, to you. yes. Amen. And if if the church can learn to step into communities and shift and change cultures and can show we can build healthy, thriving cultures that truly respects people. They don't just dodge political conversations, but truly loves, embraces, and respects people. And not only that, but we can train other content creators, YouTubers, streamers, and other online communities to do the same. We have the opportunity to offer something to the online world that it just literally doesn't really have right now. Absolutely. And so our heart, like Lux is an experiment in that as well. It's like, how can we develop an online culture that, as soon as somebody enters, we recognize that they're a real person with a real story, with a real family, with a mm. spiritual journey, with real problems. And we get a chance to be part of that instead of viewing them as, oh, you are, you know, I don't know. You're, uh, well, like, I was giving you, you are Baja Blast and I don't know who you are, but your picture is of Mountain Dew. And therefore, I don't have to care about who you are. Like, mm. if we can shift that mentality, we can offer something to the gaming community specifically. And we can actually train streamers to do this themselves and raise up teams that can do this yep. to provide places where people can find mental health and stability and really true life giving communities online. Hmm. And so like yeah. long distance that that's kind of like what we hope to be able to offer to the gaming community. By the way, Baja Blast is the best out of all of them. I don't know. I don't know where everyone landed, but that's the that's the Baja Baja Blast would agree with you. So okay, okay. yeah, that's the that's the alpha of all of them. Uh, Mark, we're gonna we got to get kind of off stream. I just looked at time. Went oh man, we're uh, we're running a little long here. So uh, <laughs> we, thanks for joining us. Uh, where can we and everybody in the world find out more about Lux and what you guys are doing? Where can we stream with you? Where can we jump into Discord? All of that. Sure. So we are luxdigitalchurch.com. You can grab all of our links there. We're also twitch.com slash twitch.tv slash luxdigitalchurch. And we are discord.gg slash luxdigitalchurch. You can grab us on any of those places and come join our community. The easiest is our website. You can find links out to everything there. Awesome. Mark, I, I'm blown away. Uh, like I said, I've been I've been following you guys. I'm going to keep following you. Uh, I would love to have you back on the show at some point. I have a million more questions for you, uh, and I have a million more hours that I would love to spend with you. You're, you're a great guy. So thanks so much for doing exactly what you're doing and reaching people, reaching the lost, especially uh, in a community that desperately, desperately needs it, Mark. Thank you, guys, and thanks to the Ultra Life team. Appreciate you. Absolutely. For Maeve Brooks, I'm Andy. We'll see you guys. Have a merry, <laughs> merry Christmas. Maeve, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mark, merry, merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, merry Christmas. See you guys. Bye.